in what is the most delightful entertainment story of the day, Shakira. Remember Shakira? She's the hips don't lie lady, correct? Okay, so uh, Shakira apparently did an interview with Allure magazine and shared her less than glowing take on Barbie. She said, quote, my sons absolutely hated it, referring to her sons who are 11 and 9. She said they felt it was emasculating, and I agree to a certain extent. She said, I like pop culture when it attempts to empower women without robbing men of their possibility to be men, to also protect and provide. I believe in giving women all the tools and the trust that we can do it all without losing our essence, without losing our femininity. I think men have a purpose in society and women have another purpose as well. We complement each other. That compliment should not be lost. A journalist asked then, just because a woman can do it all doesn't mean she shouldn't. Shakira said, why not share the load with people who deserve to carry it, who have a duty to carry it as well? Wow. Slow clap for Shakira. Oh, good job there. I feel like maybe her sons watched a particular 43-minute critique of the Barbie movie in which many Barbie dolls were burned right at the beginning. I feel like maybe that happened. But enjoying the fact that Shakira is now receiving massive blowback, it's good to know that it wasn't just me. So Shakira also taking it on the chin for mentioning that Barbie is an emasculating movie that treats men as throwaway things that are completely useless in a civilized society. Oliver Stone has also received crit criticism. He criticized Ryan Gosling for not focusing on more serious films. He said, Ryan Gosling is wasting his time. He's doing that bleep for money. He said that in June of last year. He shouldn't be part of this infantilization of Hollywood. Now it's all fancy, fancy, fantasy, including all the war pictures, fantasy, fantasy. And then he said, later, of course, he backed off of it. He said, I was able to see Barbie and appreciated the film for its originality and its themes. I apologize for speaking ignorantly. We'll see if Shakira backs off the point. But by the way, Shakira's take on femininity is exactly right. Now, femininity is something that belongs to women, and masculinity is something that belongs to men. That doesn't mean that women can't do masculine things or men can't do effeminate things. It does mean that men are required in our society, and actually, it is very good for men to be involved in society for women. One of the most hilarious social media phenomena that we've seen lately is a bunch of feminists who are realizing they like it when men pay for dinner. Well, Yes, of course you like it when men pay for dinner because it demonstrates willingness to provide, which is an essentially masculine characteristic. When you rob men of their duty in life, it turns out that men don't just disappear, they become toxic. When you rob men of mission, they redirect those aggressive energies into all the wrong places. There's a great book by George Gilder, sort of a philosopher economist called Men and Marriage, all about this. And his suggestion is that basically men are robber thieves who act aggressively until they are civilized by women and all those aggressive energies are channeled in the direction of building. So either men are going to destroy or men are going to build. When you shut men out of the building apparatus, particularly in terms of building a family, when you don't channel men's aggressive instincts toward protection of wife and hearth and home, you end up with aggressively very bad men. You end up with no men, you end up with really bad men. Half population still going to end up being men. The only question is whether those men are going to be channeling their energies in a positive and good direction or whether they're going to be following WWE light figures who are boasting about their muscles shirtless while driving Lamborghinis around and running sex rings. Right? That, that, those are the choices that you have. And there are no other choices. Either men are going to channel their aggressive, testosterone-driven instinct into something good, productive, and wonderful society. They're going to build up or they're going to tear down. Either they're going to build cathedrals or they're going to tear cathedrals down. There's no in-between. There is no man who is redefined to mean woman. And if there were, that would not be a very good man. And what does that mean? It means that it is actually a duty of women to allow men to be men, just as it is a duty of men to allow women to be women, just as it is a fact that it is a form of appropriation for men to pretend to be women and take on all these supposedly female characteristics. And it's a mockery. When women do the same with regard to masculinity, that is also bad. It is also wrong. Men and women are complementary. And the single best articulation of this comes in the book of Genesis. When God creates woman, he creates woman and says that she is Azer Konegdo, okay, which is the, that's the language in Hebrew. Azer Konegdo means a helper Konegdo against him. In other words, men and women are not meant to be perfectly equivalent. Men and women are meant to be complementary. They are meant to bounce off each other. They are meant to work in both cooperation and opposition to one another. When you get rid of that dynamic, which is what Barbie seeks to do, the Barbie movie is all about how men and women actually be better off not really living together. Barbie doesn't need Ken. Ken's an idiot. And Ken shouldn't be dominating Barbie. And apparently, according to Greta Gerwig's theory of life, those are the two choices. The two choices are effectively either men are marginalized or men are aggressively predominant. 
But the reality is that it's the beauty of the relationship between men and women that creates civilization. And when you have a civilization like ours, to go back to the theme at the beginning of today's show, a civilization like ours that is built on anti-biblical principles, what you end up with is relationships falling apart, men who act like aggressive bandits, women who are completely unmoored from the thing that makes them women, which, by the way, does have to do with childbearing and rearing. And everyone is less happy. Everyone is less happy, which is why, again, we have the most prosperous and free society in the history of humanity, and we have extraordinarily high depression rates in the West. Not a shock. A cut flower cannot grow. Did you know that a baby's heart begins to beat at just three weeks? At five weeks, the heartbeat can be heard on ultrasound, and that is sometimes the only defense that the preborn have. This is where preborn steps in. Preborn rescues 200 babies every day from abortion simply by providing moms with an ultrasound. After hearing her child's heartbeat and seeing its perfectly formed body in the womb, she's twice as likely to choose life. By six weeks, the baby's eyes are forming. By 10 weeks, a baby's able to suck his or her thumb. Preborn needs our help to save these precious lives. For just 28 bucks, you could be the difference between the life or death of a child. And if you become a monthly sponsor, you'll receive stories and ultrasound pictures of the lives you helped to save. All gifts are tax deductible. 100% of your donation goes towards saving babies. To donate, Dial pound 250, say keyword baby. That's pound 250 baby, or go to preborn.com slash Ben. That's preborn.com slash Ben. You're doing the Lord's work when you help them out. Go to preborn.com slash Ben, or dial pound 250 and say keyword baby to get started. Every dollar goes towards saving babies. Preborn.com slash Ben. The Biden White House obviously spent the weekend suggesting that Easter was of secondary importance. Trans Day of Visibility was, of course, of primary importance. Pretty much all the members of the cabinet spoke on this, including the secretary of education. It's very important that our secretary of education here in the United States speak to young Americans while wearing a Pride Progress flag pin. It is amazing how quickly all of the left wing progressive memes make themselves absolute necessities in in the Democratic Party. It really is amazing. I'm talking about the flag. Remember that time there was just a gay flag? Remember that? It was just a rainbow flag. And then like two years ago, they started promoting the Pride Progress flag, which is this ugly triangle coming in. And it only had the trans colors. And then George Floyd died. And then they added the brown and the black. Well, now, by the way, there is a second triangle that's coming in from the other side. So a flanking maneuver by various intersectional identity groups. Pretty soon the rainbow is going to be completely crowded out. But um, celebrating Trans Day of Visibility was our Secretary of Education while speaking to small children. He's wearing this Pride Progress flag pin instead of an American flag pin. Because after all, these are the values of the West now is the Pride Progress pin, not the American flag. To the many transgender students across the country listening on this Trans Day of Visibility, we in the Biden-Harris administration want you to know that we see you, we support you, and we celebrate you. We also know it's not an easy time to be you. Today, we at the Department of Education want you to know that your school, your community, and your country are better because you're a part of it. You don't just belong here. We need you here. From all of us here at the Department of Education, happy Trans Day of Visibility. Hmm. Happy Trans Day of Visibility from your Department of Education, federally funded. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 